Hello and welcome to Metals at the Glass Foundry. The Glass Foundry recycles about 12,000 pounds of scrap glass per year, but there's also a metalworking component to the business here. And here's a quick look at that process. The casting of a bathroom soap bowl with a raised water turtle design. So this is a bit of an introduction to the metal work that's going on here. I'm making low melting temperature alloys for sculptural work and growing bismuth crystals. This here is a bismuth ingot and these are about $400 and they weigh about 35 pounds. For comparison, there's an aluminum ingot and Here's a tin ingot. The tin ingots are one pound. And here is a chunk of a zinc ingot as well. So in this series of videos, I'm going to be making various non-toxic metal alloys for sculptural work. This piece of zinc here, zinc is typically used to make pot metal and the old pot metal um, dinky toy hot rod cars and tin soldiers and all that sort of thing had uh, a six or seven percent antimony content along with the zinc and it's a great metal for die casting but it's extremely toxic they're finding out now that antimony is just as toxic as arsenic if not even more toxic and recently they've discovered that the uh, demise of the Roman Empire wasn't due to their use of lead, it was due to the antimony component in the lead. So I won't be remelting any used babbit or pot metal or any other alloys like pewter that contain antimony. I'll be melting the aluminum and zinc together to make a very durable and low melting temperature alloy for sculptural work and I'll also be melting bismuth and tin together. So I'll just have a quick look at that first, the melting of bismuth and tin together. Alright, the beauty of mixing metals together is it reduces the melting temperature. Let's have a look at tin and bismuth here. So this graph, this is 50%, this line, which would be half and half tin and bismuth. So if we start with the bismuth, which melts at 272 Celsius, and we add 10% tin, then it brings the melting temperature down to here, and so on, all the way down. If we add 20% tin, it brings the melting temperature down to here. And same on the tin side. If we add a little bit of bismuth to tin, which actually melts at a higher temperature than tin, it reduces the melting temperature and so on and so this curve goes down till it hits bottom and then it goes back up again and this point right here is called the eutectic point where the composition of the two metals the ratio of the two metals is just perfect so that the mixture melts and hardens at exactly the same temperature and that is 139 Celsius so we've reduced the melting temperature by over a hundred degrees just by changing the ratio of the combination of metals. And I do some work with uh, bismuth and tin together, but I don't make a eutectic mixture. My mixture 
is over here somewhere. And that actually creates really interesting effects because if I stir the metal as it's just about solidifying, then the bismuth crystals start growing in the molten tin. So here's bismuth crystals hardening in molten tin. They're a little bit sparkly, but there isn't really any crystal growth in terms of the crazy crystals that bismuth will grow. So here's an example of a non-eutectic alloy. So I'll show the process for making these, where I'm encasing my large marbles in a metal casing. It's so beautiful working with this low temperature material. It's much different than pouring molten glass, which is hotter than lava. This stuff is so easy to work with. I don't need to wear gloves or anything. So the first thing I do is I, I find the spot on the marble that I want to be the, uh, the visual entrance into the setting. And then once I found that spot, then I heat up a this is a piece of a glue stick from a hot glue gun and I just heat it up with a, with a lighter a little bit just to you know, make it a little bit molten and I stick it on that spot, the spot that I want to be visible inside the opening. And then I take the molten metal and uh, clean off the dross so I have a nice fresh metal there. And then I roll the marble in the molten metal. You can see it's at the perfect temperature. It's just starting to crystallize a little bit. Just roll the metal like that. So I get a nice even coating all the way around. And then I dump a little bit out on this piece of kiln shelf and press it in here like that on an angle to make a stand so it doesn't wobble. And then, after I've done that, it hardens instantly. Then I can take off my, uh, my piece of hot glue that I used to hold it with, and it's done. Yeah, they turn out great, and they take under a minute to make. This is also pieces of glass that I made that I've encased in metal, but in this case it's pure bismuth, so there's rapid crystal growth. And these have stands on the back. Some of them have stands that are shaped like this, so they can sit horizontally or vertically. Here's a look at one of the topics that will be covered in this video series. This is a trilobite fossil that I bought uh, in the late 90s and I made a bronze mold from it. You can see here where I had to beef it up a little bit to get rid of the undercut. And here's an example of the resulting bismuth castings. So each casting has unique coloring. The temperature of the mold has a lot to do with it. I preheat these molds to about a thousand Fahrenheit before I pour the metal in. And of course there's the underside where the crystals are grown. So that was just an example. There will be over two dozen tutorials here at the Glass Foundry covering different aspects of metal casting and alloy work. And of course lots of bismuth tutorials as well. Look at this bismuth fish. Beautiful crystallization. Beautiful coloring. And look at this bismuth ornament. These are hanging ornaments made with bismuth crystals. Beautiful stuff.
so join me on patreon.com my channel there is called backyard foundry where for a few dollars a month you can have access to all of these metalworking tutorials including mold making sand casting and lots of crazy bismuth stuff too